Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and I've had a lot of friends request some training, some insight on Zoom and how to use video conferencing tools. So I figured I'd do a screen record and show you some basic things I've learned. I'm not saying I know at all on Zoom, but I've been using Zoom and video conferences like this for years and probably anywhere from two to four times a day for the past three to four years. So I'm going to go ahead and log into Zoom, go to my account, and I'm going to show you a couple differences. So number one, if you're doing a meeting, a meeting is where everybody is going to be on the screen and have access. So you've seen all the screenshots of people having Zoom meetings. That's where you're going to have like the Brady Bunch look where all of us are in boxes. If you're going to do webinar, webinar is where you and whoever you add as a panelist are going to be on the screen and all of your people joining will not be able to participate except in the chat or questions. They will not be visible couple features to know about webinar and meeting differences. The biggest difference for me on meetings and webinars is meetings are hosted online and broadcast on Zoom's platform. A webinar can be broadcast on Facebook and Facebook groups. And I'll show you that in a second how to do that. But first, let's just go ahead and go into meetings. So I'm going to schedule a new meeting. Now, a couple of things, for whatever reason, mine pops up sometimes, this down here, this meeting password, it defaults, I guess. I always uncheck that. Unless you want to have this be private, you can take that off. But I'm going to call this Test Zoom Meeting, all capital, so you know it's a meeting. You're going to choose your time, so I'm going to choose today at 10 a.m., April 3rd, one hour. You can make reoccurring if you want it to be every week, every day. You can have registration required so that you know that people are going to register. That's where the password down here comes in. Uh, let's see here. Scrolling down here, host and panelist, you can make it. That's why you don't have to worry about it to where host and panelist video is automatically on. Audio, I recommend both. And the reason I recommend both is some people might call in and be better off using the phone line when they call in. They get a choice of using audio on their device, the internet, or calling in. And then down here, a couple important things. Number one, enable join before host. I would not check that. If you're the person hosting this event, and you don't want people in there bebopping around and talking uh, and doing their thing before you join, I would have that. I would not have that checked. If you don't care, if it's an open thing that everybody can join, they can see each other, then definitely do that. Mute participants on entry. This is a huge one. Uh, if, if you're doing this and you're trying to have people join as they go, the thing that blows up online meetings, and this is one of the reasons I don't use uh, go to webinar because everybody always enters the room and it da ding and makes a noise. But the big negative a lot of times is when you don't have people muted and they're in their car, they're at their house, they're making noise and they join the meeting 10 minutes in and you guys are already rocking and 10 people join and they're not muted, that's a headache. So have mute. Enable waiting room. That's basically where you're allowing people to wait for you. I don't usually do that. Uh, only authenticated users can join. Can be honest with you, I've never used that so I have no clue what that is. And then recording. So if you're going to be recording this to use in the future, or to distribute to people. When you do recording in the cloud, it actually gives you the ability after the webinar, as the, the meeting is over, it'll send you an email and let you know that it's uploaded to the cloud and it will give you a share link where you can have people watch that via online. If you do it to a local computer, it's going to record it and download it to your computer which means you then have to either upload it to YouTube or upload it to Dropbox or Google Drive or somewhere and share that. So if you're looking to share this meeting, I would do it in the cloud. And you can also here record this meeting automatically. I would have the meeting recorded automatically. If you're not confident, you're going to remember to click the record button. Otherwise, un uncheck that. And so when it pops up, I'll show you that in a second when you open the meeting. So I'm going to save this meeting. And big thing here with regards to adding it to your calendar. Uh, you want to click this to add this to your Google Calendar if you want to put invites out on there. So you can click this. It'll ask for permission to access your calendar. And then choose my email, my Google account. Yes, I'm going to allow it. When I do these on my phone, it automatically adds it to the calendar. I'm not sure what setting is in there that does that, but it's pretty handy. I schedule a lot of meetings with Zoom on my phone. But now you've got this test Zoom meeting. I can go in here and add my guests. You got all this good stuff. So you would just click save and that would add it to your calendar. I don't need to do it since we're not adding it because we're good. So I exit that. 
go back to Zoom. So now I'm going to start this meeting. You know, before, well, there's the link back in there. It's pretty obvious that of where to where to send the invite. You can copy that, how to join, and send it to your team. That's pretty basic. So now I am in this meeting, and it might not let me have camera because it recognizes I'm recording my screen, and maybe I already have my camera. So I'm using computer audio. Yeah, video is not going to let me because I'm already using my video uh, for this video. But a couple things down here. Number one, you got the invite button. You can click this and you can copy the URL pretty easily. Go to your Gmail account. Open an email up. Paste this in there. Send it to them. Pretty simple. Go back to Zoom. You've also got the ability to send it directly from here. So pretty simple stuff. Next one over is manage participants. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invite somebody. Doug, I'm going to invite Doug, who knows I'm doing this. And so I'm going to have him join the call. And that way you'll be able to see how you can control what they're doing. So if I click that, I'm going to send Doug that link. Doug's going to join the Zoom meeting here in a second, and when I come back to him, we'll do that. Share screen. This green arrow is what you use to share your screen. You can share based on any screen. You can share on tabs, all that good stuff. But let's just say I go here, and I'm going to share my basic screen. I'm going to go here to my email, my Google. So I'm going to share this. So that is now being shared. People can see that. You got to click stop share. If you're doing a webinar, which I'm going to show you in a second, people have to have the ability to share their screen. They have to be a panelist. And you have to give them permission. Whereas in this case, typically anybody can share the screen unless you have a setting different. So you can see a lot of participants can share a screen simultaneously. All that good stuff. So there we go. Doug is in here now. So let's just say that Doug's up here and I want to unmute Doug. I can unmute Doug so I can talk. Hello. Unmute it. There you go. Test one. Okay, so he was unmuted. I can go on here and I can stop video. You know what? Doug's doing, walking around his house with his shirt off. I'm going to pass. So I do that. I don't think Doug ever would do that, but I actually saw a Zoom the other day where a lady went into the bathroom and put her computer down and Proceeded to use the bathroom, not realizing her camera was on. So handy there. You can make uh, that person a host. So let's say you're leaving early. Let's say there's me, Doug, and 10 other people from our team, and I'm the host. And I got to leave. I got an emergency or I got a phone call. Or, you know what? I'm done with the meeting. Uh, you guys carry on without me. If I exit, there's a good chance that meeting ends. So I can go on here and say, hey, I want to make Doug the host. Easy. I want to remove Doug. Don't want Doug in my meeting. Doug's saying crazy stuff. Get rid of him. I want to chat with Doug. I can click here and I can chat with Doug. Now look at this down here in this part. I can chat with Doug and say, hey, Doug. Or I can click this toggle and I can chat with everybody in the meeting. So make sure if you're talking to somebody privately, I would actually recommend not using this feature if you're trying to do it privately because what's going to happen is somehow you're going to accidentally get here and go, Doug. Ashley is crazy. And then all of a sudden, everybody saw it. I've actually seen that happen. So if you're going to chat, make sure if it's going to be private, you want to not do it over uh, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and kick Doug out of here. See you, Doug. You're gone. Boom. He's gone. Okay. So I'm back to here. So you got the chat feature. Record. You can record on the computer. You can record to the cloud. If you record to the cloud, like I mentioned, it's going to give you the chance to see a recording of it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this because that's going to give me a short recording, and you're going to see the email I get in a minute. If I want to record to my computer, it's going to record it to my computer, and it's going to give me a file to download when I exit the meeting. You'll see in a minute. Reactions, just like Facebook, emojis, all that good stuff. So that's pretty much the gist of using this. Now over here to the left, I want to show you audio and microphone. You have the ability 
if I were to turn off my, I'm muting myself, you have the ability to join a Zoom call via audio from a phone call or from your computer. So you can see here, if I go to switch phone audio, that gives me the ability to do exactly that, just switch to phone audio where I'm gonna, it's gonna give me a touch on my a number on my phone, I click the call and it calls in. If I'm gonna leave the computer audio, I leave there, go to there, no big deal. Something big on the camera, which comes up a lot. You've got front and rear. This is, if I were to do this, if my camera wasn't being used for this uh, screen record, I would, that would be my rear would be the camera that's on the other side of my laptop that's facing out like I'm looking out. The front's gonna be the one looking at me. Uh, you can change your virtual background. You can go in here and you can choose pictures and add crazy stuff. You've probably seen people doing that. I had honestly never seen that before this past week of doing Zoom calls with people uh, that had never done them. My guess is they were playing around in there, but I had never seen that part of it in years. The other aspect to remember that you might have a problem with, I've got a second computer monitor right in front of me. If I have that second computer monitor hooked up to my computer, it acts as the, another monitor for my computer, which we understand, but it also steals the audio signal. So my microphone will not work on my laptop with another device plugged in like a monitor. Yesterday, I was talking to a friend of mine who's an attorney who does dictation. He has a, a tool of some sorts that's hooked to his computer to do dictation. And he realizes when that's plugged into his computer or turned on, it takes the audio away. And it makes sense. It's putting the audio into that device. So make sure if you're doing a Zoom and you don't have audio, or you don't have video, you might be taking that source to somewhere else. So let's go ahead and end this meeting and you're gonna see a couple things happen. Number one, it's going to pop up on my screen, this, this convert meeting to recording and it goes to where I wanna save this to. So let's just save this to uh, my desktop and Zoom and I'm gonna click that. And now if I go to Zoom, here is that file. And record it to my computer, and it's going to give me a file to. There you go. So there's that file from that. And if I were to go into my Zoom account, go back to Zoom, you're going to go underneath recordings, and you're going to see. The one that I just did, it might say rendering. So if I go to recording, and these have taken a little longer lately because of what's going on uh, with everybody using Zoom. There it is. So you can see that. I probably have an email then. Let's go to my inbox. You can forward this out, or you can, you know, this says right here, for host only, click to view the recording details. Viewers cannot access this. This right here, share recording with viewers. So if you want to copy this and put this in an email and send it out to people or you want to put it on Facebook or you want to put it at a private group you have or you want to put it in something you use for like a work portal, you can do that. My computer is not liking me how slow today. But anyways, you get the point there. And if I were to click that, here we go. That's what I was wanting to do. So I've got this. You can always test it by clicking it, and it'll open up to a screen that gives people the ability to view the meeting. Be aware. In your settings, you can make it to where they can't download it. So if I go into my advanced, I believe it's under account management, recording management, I believe there's a button here that makes it to where uh, it might be under settings. Where you can make it to where somebody can't download recordings. Here we go. So down here, there's all the different settings. You know, host can, host can give participants to record. Uh, I always, a lot of people have that turned off so that people can't record your call except for you. Then down here, you've got all this stuff. You know, you can see the different viewings. You can see how people can uh, do things with regards to that recording. So I would you know, get you to go in here and look at that. Yeah, you go right here. Cloud recording downloads. Allow anyone with the link to cloud recording download. To, allow anybody with the link of the cloud recording to download it. You can turn that off so they can't download it maybe. 
So that's the settings there. Now let's go to webinar. Get rid of that. So now on a webinar, there's a couple differences. So I'm going to schedule a webinar and I'm going to say test webinar, test webby. Maybe not. I'm going to say 10 o'clock again down here, webinar password. I like registration to be required on webinars because I want to know who's attending and I want to be able to look at my attendance ahead of time to see who's going to be there. So I would recommend having that checked. You can change what's required of your webinar registrations under your account management. You can ask for phone number, email, company, all that good stuff. Again, same thing down here. You can have reoccurring. You can have the video automatically on the host and on the panelists. I recommend that because you're going to have a hard time finding the video for your panelists. I'll show you why. Uh, audio, you got that. Webinar, you can have questions and answers. Practice session I ever use. That's if you want to practice the webinar. Not a bad thing if you've never done it. Alternative hosts. If I want to have Doug be a host on my webinar, I add him. Doug at mattplapp.com. Recording, record webinar automatically, local or in the cloud, as we just talked about. If you're going to have something you want replayed and people to access it quickly and easily, I would do it in the cloud. I would not do it on your computer. If you're going to use this and download this file, I do that. So, like, I'll broadcast my stuff live on Facebook. Like, I did a webinar, two webinars in the last two weeks. I broadcast live on Facebook, but I recorded it locally because I then downloaded it chopped it up a little, put some graphics on it, and put it on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule this. And the same thing with regards to adding it to your calendar. That's the same option there. I'm going to go ahead and start this. And so this is basically the same as the meeting controls I just showed you. A big difference is going to be the ability to go live. So if I go on here, stop my video, put my picture up because again, my video is not able to be seen. You got my recording down here. I can pause and stop it. I'm going to go ahead and stop it because I have no reason to and it tells you you want to stop the cloud recording. Yes. So participants, Doug's going to join here as an attendee. So Doug's going to join as an attendee, and when he joins as an attendee, I'm going to be able to show you some stuff over here on this. Because what's going to happen, what typically happens is Doug's got his video here. Let's, let's turn Doug's video off. And what happens a lot of times is... When you go to your participants, this is a feature a lot of people mess up on. Down here, there is a button, allow panelists to start video. More times than not, people that are doing webinars, I had one I was on a week and a half ago, the, the person doing the webinar had never used this, they didn't practice it, they didn't have video enabled. I joined and it doesn't, it doesn't show me in there. It just shows a picture of me. And they can't find this button because it's not real intuitive. So you've got this whole dashboard down here for your webinar, but then you've got this dashboard here for your panelists and for your attendees. So I can go under attendees and I'll have the same thing. I go under panelists and I've got the ability here to mute panelists on entry. I've got the ability to allow panelists to unmute themselves. If I don't want to have them unmute themselves, like right now, Doug now could not unmute himself. I would have to unmute him. That is handy because what you're going to find in this world of telecommunicating, a lot of people are not familiar with it and they're going to have their mics un, un, undone and they're going to be yelling at their dog and talking to their wife and their kids asking for, for money to go to Chick-fil-A and you're going to hear everything. Allow panelists to rename themselves. Depends the environment you're in. Uh, I've had some friends of mine that have had a lot of fun with their names on webinars and meetings. And depends on the environment you're in. If you want to have somebody name themselves something crude and rude, I would recommend maybe uh, turning that off. Uh, play and enter. Let's see. Play and enter with chime. I would have that off. 
Because what's going to happen is that when people enter, it's going to go da ding. And if you're in the middle of a conversation and 10 people enter as webinar panelists, da ding, da ding, da ding, you don't want that. So have that turned off. Let's see. Allow panel to start video. We just talked about that. That's where you're going to click that. Now Doug can start his video. So if Doug were to turn his video on, he has the ability to turn his video on, whereas he didn't before. And I can say ask to start video. So now he gets the ask to start video. He's there. He can't unmute himself. I would have to unmute him because I muted him. Down here. So I'll go ahead and turn his video off. Adios, Doug. And then I come down here to you know, view participant count, uh, active speaker view, gallery view. Those can also be chosen up here in the top right. So another difference on meeting and webinar is meetings, webinars is only going to show the people that are involved in the webinar as panelists. Meetings will show everybody. And so you can toggle that up top there and see like on the meeting part, I can have all my people at the top and then the the people, the person that's speaking in the middle, or I can have the Brady Bunch look. So that covers it. Oh, I, one last thing. Webinar. The ability, one of the coolest things about the webinar feature that if you're using it is the ability to broadcast. So I can put it live on Facebook, live on Workplace by Facebook, which you don't use Workplace by Facebook to manage your company, your team, your clients. You're missing out. It's awesome. Or live on YouTube. So if I want to go live on Facebook, I'm going to click live on Facebook. My computer always opens up a window explores, explore tab. It's going to ask me where I want to share this. So I can put it on my personal timeline. I can put it in a, a group. I don't know. I've never done sharing on a friend's timeline. That would be funny to have a, a prank there. But uh, share in a group, an event, or a page you manage. So I'm going to share a page I manage. So I go to my page I manage here, and I'm going to scroll down and find... One of my pages. Let's go. Uh, where's Matt Plapp at? Somewhere. There I am. So this is my business page. I'm going to go next. It's going to open up the screen where I would give this a title and I would give this a description. Now, one warning assume when you hit this live button that it goes live. There's usually about a three to 10 second delay for this thing to actually get live. And I have had errors where this screen here, this little thing circling, stays on for 20, 30, 40 seconds. I don't know why. I don't know if it's an internet connection issue, if it's a usage issue, but you're gonna go over here and you're gonna put test and you're gonna put a title because it's gonna ask you if you don't put a title, you can put tags if you want. And you're going to click this go live button down here. Now, I'm not going to do this because I'm not going to go live. But assume whenever you click that button that it's live. And what I typically tell people to do is when you click that button, say, okay, people, we are loading live on Facebook. We'll be live here any second. If you're seeing this live, hey, it's Matt Plath. We're on the Zoom, how to do a Zoom webinar presentation. I'm going to check my devices, make sure we're live and the audio sounds good. Give me a couple seconds, stand by. What you don't want to do is be like, hey guys, we're going live in a couple seconds and then somebody crack a funny joke and then somebody say something else. Next thing you know, your entire life is online. So that is that. I think that gives me everything. So I'm going to go out here and click stop live stream. It never was on there, but that it was sitting in the back ready. So if I go down here, you can do the same thing on YouTube. And that's about it. So that, that wraps up everything with regards to what I could think of from Zoom meetings and webinars and again the number one thing i literally see this a ton is this feature right here when you're doing a webinar and you have your participants now if i had an attendee here like if i were to listen to this i'm going to move doug to an attendee can i move him to an attendee no i guess i can't usually if he wasn't a host i could make him an attendee and then I can promote him to a panelist. But you can promote these people that are attendees to panelists so they can come over here. But this is the biggest thing. People can never find that allow to start video button. It just hides and people don't, aren't accustomed to looking there because you're accustomed to looking down here. So that wraps it up. I'm going to end this webinar. I'm going to end this little uh, tutorial session. I hope that helped. Have fun. Be safe. Keep doing business. Adios.